Hola, ¿cómo estás? Buenos días, buenas tardes, o oh, buenas noches. Hello, and welcome to today's video. Today, I just want to say a big thank you to you for 100,000 subscribers. 100,000 suscriptores. No lo puedo creer. This is amazing. Seriously, guys, it's, it's insane how this whole journey even got started. And I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, and so today, I thought we'd do a little preguntas y respuestas, little questions and answers. So I've got a bunch of questions that you guys asked me a few days ago, and we're going to take a look at some of them. All right, let me pull them up here. Okay, so here's a great question, and I think this is very appropriate for celebrating 100,000 subscribers. Once again, thank you very much. And that is, what or who inspired you to start making YouTube videos, and how has that impacted your life? Appreciate the content. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you very much, Sarah. Um, so good question. So... You know, it's funny because when I was in high school is actually when I started my YouTube channel, my current YouTube channel. It was my senior year, and that's why it's called Nate's Adventures, because originally I thought, hey, it'd be really cool to just make fun videos of my friends and I and put them on YouTube and kind of see how it goes. Because, you know, all throughout high school, I'd, my friend Chris and I had said, man, how cool would it be to just be able to make money from YouTube and travel the world and just make cool videos? That sounds like the dream job. And so, you know, I had this idea my senior year, well, you know, like, I like to do fun things, I like making videos, I like going and traveling around. Why don't I just kind of record these and put them out on YouTube and see what happens? So I was doing that for a while and I actually started taking it quite seriously. Uh, and I remember, I, t I have a screenshot on my phone of when I got to 100 subscribers, and that was like a really big deal for me. And then, yeah, and then, so what ended up happening was I made videos like that, and then I ended up studying abroad in Spain, and I lived there for three months. And I made three videos, or excuse me, four videos while I was out there, um, one each month of kind of my experience there, and then kind of a final recap video. When I got back, you know, I said, man, that was a lot of fun making videos like that. Why don't I make more videos in Spanish? And then I started kind of making a few videos of these funny teacher videos. I had, you know, I had seen things like that on YouTube. I thought, well, I could do that. It'd be kind of fun. Um, and then that's kind of when the channel really started to take off. And now here we are. Um, but yeah, I would say it was just kind of this desire to say, like, wow, it'd be cool to make fun videos and, um, you know, share the videos that I enjoy with people and, and, and the things that I like with people. And uh, yeah. Y un consejo para entender mejor los, los hablantes nativos cuando hablan rápido. Pues honestamente, eso simplemente va a tomar tiempo. Este... Es buena idea escuchar mucho uh, audio en español, podcasts, películas, series, música, como no, hablantes, nativos, gente. Um, sí, como estar, como siempre digo, estar sumergido en el idioma te va a ayudar mucho porque vas a estar escuchando mucho. Ah, ok, yo escuché esto, esto y luego así vas aprendiendo, ¿no? Como que al principio, es como un bebé. Al principio, los bebés no saben nada de su idioma y toma mucho tiempo para ellos entender lo que están diciendo los demás. Pero la razón por la que empiezan a entender y poder hablar es porque han estado escuchando por unos años, ¿no? Dos años, algo así, antes de que empiecen a hablar. Entonces, es importante que siempre estás escuchando audio en español. Eso es lo más importante, diría yo. Y sí. All right, so Ava wants to know, how long did it take you to understand most of spoken Spanish? Are there certain Spanish dialects that you still struggle to understand? Great question. Um, uh, it's hard to say. I would say it took me maybe two to three years to really understand most things that people were saying. Now, when it comes to dialects, definitely, I find it much more difficult to understand people from Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. Um, also, you know, it just... You'd be surprised, even after having learned Spanish for so long and, and, you know, kind of really gotten to an extremely advanced level, there's still plenty of times where if I'm speaking with, like, a native speaker in Mexico, for example, I've experienced this even in just the past year of, you know, granted I was in, like, a very kind of small little area of Mexico, but, um, you know, someone might say something to me and, I, and I'd be like, sorry, what was that? You're going to have to say that again. Um, so I think, you know, when you combine people's different accents as well as, you know, dialects in different regions, um, that can, um, you know, affect how easy it is to, to understand someone. For example, there's a YouTuber and his name is Luisito Comunica. Y su español es muy fácil de entender. Like, it's so easy to understand. Um, 
man, you know, I could watch his videos all day and understand every single word he says. However, when you get into, you know, just different regions of the Spanish-speaking world, sometimes they just don't speak, like, as enunciated or clear as he does, or, um, you know, there's different words, so, so yeah, I'd say I could still get better at understanding more spoken Spanish. Of course, I can have a conversation with anyone about anything, but there's still, like, random little things, um, that I could definitely improve upon. But that's also the important mindset to have, is the growth mindset of like, hey, I can still get better at my listening comprehension skills and my speaking skills. Um, it's funny because I honestly haven't spoken a lot of Spanish in the past two weeks. And even just speaking Spanish in this video, my Spanish feels like a little rusty almost. It's actually quite funny. Um, even though I'm listening to music every day and whatnot, um, speaking, you know, often it really does help a lot to, to keep the, the language fresh and, and clear. But anyways, good question. All right, what is your favorite Mexican candy? A mí me encanta tamarindo, me gusta mucho. Este, no sé cómo se llama, pero creo que se llama pelón rico o pelón, pelón rico, algo así, como el dulce que es así, como el hombre y ahí tiene su pelo allí, es como ahí tamarindo. Eh, sí, diría que me gusta mucho el tamarindo. Not sure if you've already been asked this, but in your opinion, do you think it's worth it to change all my devices to Spanish, even though I'm not going to understand most of it? Is that actually going to help with immersing myself in Spanish, or is it more important to just study a little bit each day, or however often I can be consistent? Great question, Justin. So, to be honest, yes, you should change your phone into Spanish, um, and that can just be something that's additional to studying whatever you may be. So if it's my course, for example, studying that every single day, um, you know, like I said, small little bites consistently. Um, but yes, putting your phone in Spanish really is going to help you out a lot. Of course, you're not going to understand a lot of the things that your phone is saying, but that's exactly what you want because then you're gonna have to look things up and be translating. Uh, and it's, it's a fantastic way to learn very common vocabulary. <laughs> okay, this is a good question. In your opinion, what's better, Spanish music or English music? So it's hard to say. I would say neither. Um, however, I do listen to more music in Spanish than I do in English. Um, so, you know, if you didn't already know, I listen to a lot of music from the north of Mexico called Norteños, which is why oftentimes many people say, oh, you kind of talk like a ranchero. You talk like you're from El Norte. Uh, and that's simply because I'm absorbing a lot of uh, music uh, from that region. Which is kind of cool, actually, how it, that kind of works out. Um, but yeah, it's hard to say. Like this morning, I was listening to John Mayer, but then right after that, I was listening to like Intocable and Pesado and, all, and bands like that. So um, sometimes it just depends on my mood, but also I would say most times I'm listening to music in Spanish. So Strawn Davy wants to know, any tips for people who understand the language but struggle with choosing an accent? I'm Scottish and have been learning Spanish in high school, but well, we aren't taught to have a certain accent, and I feel this can be detrimental to speaking Spanish with locals or native speakers. Any tips on where to get started with this, Nate? Great question, Davey. So, to be honest, I, I'd say, you know, in my opinion, don't worry too much about um, choosing an accent just yet. I would say the only reason you should be choosing an accent, if there's a certain Spanish-speaking country that specifically draws your attention, you say, wow, Panama is a fascinating place. I want to learn that accent. Or Argentina, I love it. I want to learn that kind of accent. Um, and of course, there's different accents within those countries. Um, because to be honest, when I was first learning Spanish, I didn't technically choose an accent. However, I will say, just because I'm here in Southern California and we have a lot of Mexican influence here, it may be that, you know, I just subconsciously or without realizing it was kind of learning this more Mexican accent. Um, as opposed to maybe from Spain or, or Puerto Rico, or wherever. Um, so I would say, you know, don't worry too much about it. Um, just focus on, you know, having a good pronunciation of the vowels is what I always tell students. So, a, e, i, o, u. If you can get those down well, then honestly, you'd be surprised how much that can really help your accent. Uh, a lot of people don't say these correctly. So that's what I would say is don't worry too much about it. However, if there is a country that you really like, say, oh wow, I want to learn the, the accent from Spain, then go right ahead and, and start to learn a more Spanish kind of accent. Mr. P.O.G. ¿Quieres saber? ¿Nos puedes decir unos consejos para que podamos mejorar el aprendizaje del vocabulario? Amo tu canal, eres genial, Nate. Bueno, muchas gracias. Um, bueno, para mejorar el aprendizaje del vocabulario, yo diría, um, siempre tener un traductor contigo, Yo hasta hoy siempre tengo un traductor conmigo aquí en mi celular y siempre lo estoy usando. 
Entonces yo diría como Vas a empezar a aprender más vocabulario Si estás escuchando mucho el idioma Si no, nunca vas a aprender palabras nuevas ni nada así Pero si estás escuchando el idioma Ok, si estás escuchando música o lo que sea Pues vas a escuchar una palabra, una frase Y vas a decir ¿Y eso qué quiere decir? Desprecio ¿Eso qué es? Capricho ¿Eso qué es? <ríe> Como frases o palabras que escucharás en canciones Entonces yo diría Escucha la música o lo que sea en español Siempre estar escuchando la música en español Y luego Así traduce las palabras que aprendes y, O escuchas y estudialas y así vas a mejorar el aprendizaje del vocabulario. How's learning Chinese going? Learning Chinese is going great, actually. Um, although I've honestly been a bit lazy. Actually, yesterday when I was at school, I got to have like a one-hour conversation with this girl in Mandarin. Um, and that was like really cool, really rewarding. And it's always fun too because when you speak a language that you're learning with someone, you realize how much you can still get better at. You know, there's so many things I was trying to say to her that I just had no idea. But I'd also like to say that that's how it was when I was, you know, first learning Spanish. It was a lot of like, wait, oh, how do I, how do I say that? Or wait, oh wait, how would I, can you tell me how I would say that? Or do I put this word there? So, um, so yeah, Chinese is going good, you know? It's a slow, slow burn, but we're getting there. Alrighty, cool. So this is a really good question. What are some future goals for you? Five specific goals. Um, I don't know if I can give you five, but I can definitely give you some. So I graduate from university in the next couple of months here. And after I graduate, I'm going to go travel around for a bit. Just go traveling. Um, but some goals that I have are to improve my Spanish, improve my Mandarin, travel around, Um, keep working on and improving my Spanish uh, teaching website, SpanishRefinite.com. That's a big part of my life now. Um, and number five, I'd say, ooh, I don't know, just keep improving myself, keep being, a, you know, trying to become a better person. Um, and yeah, just being grateful every day. I think that's an important goal to have. All right, so this is a great question, and I think this one is actually kind of near and dear to me. And that is, I learned Spanish in high school and was able to pass a seal of biliteracy test. What should I do in college to continue my learning and develop my Spanish skills even further? It's a fantastic question. So you're kind of actually in the same boat that I was in um, when I graduated high school. So just like you, as you know, learned Spanish in high school, I also passed the seal by literature test. Great job on that. And when it came to college, I went to community college and I thought, you know, I don't want to just leave Spanish because I knew plenty of people in high school who maybe learned for three years and they were doing actually quite well, but then their last year they didn't take Spanish and it just went just down the drain. So I thought, okay, I don't want that to happen to me. So when I went to community college, I actually took a Spanish class there and actually it was like a, it wasn't even like an advanced thing. Like to be honest, I was like a second teacher in that class. It was kind of funny because the teacher was actually a family friend of mine. Um, and so I kind of became like the TA of the class. I, it's like almost like I wasn't even a student. But in a way, that was actually quite rewarding and super fun. So I would say try to just take any Spanish class if you can. Obviously, the more advanced, the better, since you don't want to be, you know, wasting your time relearning stuff. But the main idea is you want to be kind of still immersed and still surrounded with the language um, as opposed to just kind of having learned it and then just not being around it and then just forgetting it. How do you recommend studying Spanish tenses and which to learn first? I feel there are so many, it can get very confusing. Thanks. Great question, Nico. So, the most important tenses to learn are the present tense, the preterite tense, and the imperfect tense. If you can get those three down, it's kind of like the triple whammy, um, your Spanish will be, um, you know, you'll be coasting, you'll be doing um, well. You'll be able to communicate basically most, mostly anything you really want to, to be honest. Um, when it comes to studying the Spanish tenses, Um, start using conjugation charts. So if you haven't already seen this, it's kind of like these T charts. They're absolutely fantastic for learning Spanish tenses. Granted, these uh, conjugation charts only apply to regular verbs because regular verbs in Spanish follow regular conjugation patterns, whereas irregular verbs do not, and therefore you simply have to memorize them. However, um, I would say study those. So study the conjugation charts for regular AR, ER, IR verbs in the present, preterite, and imperfect tenses, and you'll be on your way, and then just keep immersing yourself and having fun learning the language. Okay, Frankie, ¿quieres saber? Ante todo, gracias por todo su contenido. Gracias, Frankie. 
Ver tus videos me motiva a seguir aprendiendo español. No espero que leas esto, pero ¿qué te inspiró a aprender español? Además, ¿qué te mantuvo en marcha cuando tenías ganas de rendirte? Por último, si, si, si hubiera algo que desearás hacer de manera diferente para ayudarte a aprender mejor el español, ¿cuál sería? Bueno, Frankie, muy bien español hablas, ¿eh? <ríe> Hasta usaste el hubiera, muy bueno. Bueno, eh, ¿qué me inspiró a aprender español? Pues, honestamente no quería aprender el español, pero cuando yo empecé a tomar las clases en la prepa, yo ya tenía unos amigos que hablaban español y pensé, oh, esto será como interesante hablar con ellos y a ver cómo se me entienden cuando les hablo. Y como cuando empecé a hablar con ellos en español, me, se me hizo muy interesante. Como que, wow, puedo hacer estos sonidos nuevos con mi boca y ahora una persona completamente nueva me puede entender. Eso es algo como muy impacto, ¿no? Como que, wow, qué curioso. Entonces, creo que eso me, se me hizo interesante y pensé, pues... Si, te, si tengo que como estudiar el español por unos tres años al mínimo, voy a intentar a, realmente aprenderlo porque no quiero gastar mi tiempo. Bueno, well, guys, there you have it. Muchas gracias por ver este video. Um, yeah, I just want to say, hey, thank you so much for 100,000 subscribers, 100,000 suscriptores. I cannot believe it. Like, that's so humbling. Um, and honestly, sometimes, I'll be honest, I feel like I'm not really good at this whole social media like connecting with people or like i don't know sometimes it's, it's just difficult for me like i see these other like social media influencers and like they're good at you know communicating with their audience and they've got like these funny personalities and they've got like really cool content they're putting out all the time and to be honest it's quite difficult for me like sometimes i feel like man i'm sometimes i just i don't know i find it tough and difficult to like i don't know like engage well with you and and sometimes i feel like bad about that and i just you know i don't know i and maybe that's just something that i'll get better with over time um you know because i want to make awesome videos for you guys i want to inspire you to improve your spanish or your english um but sometimes i'm like man i don't feel like an influencer you know like that's just not like how i feel like i'm not i feel like i'm actually not super into like social media and stuff like that um you know i i don't know so um Anyways, it's just, it's amazing. So I just want to say thank you so much, 100,000 of you watching my videos. It's, it's, uh, it's really humbling. And I want to say just say thank you so much again from the bottom of my heart. Um, and yeah, I hope you've learned something new about me or about learning Spanish or English uh, in this video. Um, and yeah, muchas gracias. De nuevo, cien mil suscriptores. Sí, espero que tengas buen día o... Buenas tardes, buenas noches, lo que sea. <laughs> bueno pues, cuídate. And uh, yeah, thanks again. You guys are you guys are awesome. Thanks. Adiós.